Well, let's move on now. This week, as we told you, the government reconvening Canberra to release a cost of living package. Now, the Tom Tom drum suggests it'll break an election promise and change the stage three tax cuts at the urging of unions, the Greens and the left. So to give out cost of living relief on one hand, but the change tax cuts you've committed to is kind of like giving with one hand and taking with the other. So how does that play out economically? Now, this is just in from a press release from the Business Council of Australia, the AI Group, the Australian Industry Group, the Minerals Council and the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, urging the government to stick with the Stage 3 tax cuts. It says business calls on the government not to break the promise it took to the last federal election just over 18 months ago. To not do so would undeniably dent the government's credibility and damage the prospect of the fundamental phased revamp of taxation arrangements that the IMF has recently reminded us is so important for our future. So let's bring in here Warren Hogan, independent economist and an advisor to the small business lender, Judo Bank. Warren, good to chat to you again. Happy New Year to you. I just want to go to this economically. How does this play out if the government decides to divert the money for stage three tax cuts into some other sort of, if you like, middle and lower income support? Yeah, good day, Ross. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, look, I think the, the the first point that's already been made by the Business Council there is credibility. And this is not a proposed tax cut. This is law. This is part of a long-standing package and it represents genuine economic reform. So even the mildest of tweaking will not be looked at well in the broader community. And, and it really does suggest a government that's putting political imperative in front of the well-being of the economy. And look, the reality is to even reduce at the margin some of the tax cut for some income earners is actually a tax hike because everyone knows it's coming and planned for it. So that's the first point. The other one is, you know, a problem with cost of living uh, support is it's supportive of the economy as well. And that sort of works at odds with what the Reserve Bank's trying to do and slow the economy and get rid of inflation. So the, the, the tweaking of the stage three tax cuts to reduce the tax cut for higher income earners and give more to lower income earners has the benefit of being revenue neutral and therefore not providing a stimulus to the economy. So the, the interesting side about this, Warren, also is it goes with what the current state of the economy is. After all, people are expecting that interest rates will be coming down perhaps by even later this year. But if there is any stimulus to the economy, which is exactly what, uh, you know, a package, a cost of living package is going to do, that could defer those interest rate cuts until the following year, until 2025. Well, that's exactly right. And I think that's one of the concerns uh, from economists and, and potentially the Treasury is that, you know, the full weight of these tax cuts that are planned um, could actually get in the way of the slowdown and make it harder for the RBA to cut. And if the economy actually proves resilience uh, in the in the next six months, it could actually pave the way for more rate hikes. So the point is, is a justified one. But um, the reality is, is that the government is looking at this from a political point of view uh, rather than what's needed for the economy is my interpretation. And I think the best thing they can do is nothing, to stay the course and stick to their strategy of keeping the extra revenues, maintaining a sort of discipline around fiscal policy and hoping that the Reserve Bank's got the job done with a 4.35% cash rate. All right, so I'm the first to moan about electricity prices or when I go to the supermarket, I see prices sometimes that I have a grumble about. But the fact of the matter is, is there hard evidence right now that Australians need a cost of living relief package from this government, apart from, as you say, for political reasons? Well, I think there is genuine distress going on in various parts of the economy. How much of it um, is severe and in contrary to what we would regard as the basic standards of our civilization i think is only at the low income areas and that's all around rentals and housing it's all around homelessness and i think that should really be the centerpiece of government's focus in the short term and some of the state governments have got some good initiatives to get people off the streets and into temporary accommodation but that's where the real stress is um, in terms of um, general cost of living well no one likes to see their living standard go backwards and that's a matter of judgment um, whether or not it's severe or whether it's a political cost to the incumbent government, you might say. And I've got about 15 seconds, but the real thing about this is jobs, keeping as many people in jobs as they possibly can, isn't it? Yeah, well, there's, we're starting to see some early signs of weakness in the labour market, but you're right, the government 
may have an ulterior motive here also to provide support for the economy and keep the unemployment rate from going up too much. It's going to be fascinating to see. Oh, by the way, just one thing. Interest rate cut this year or next year, do you think? Look, I'm happy with Q4 this year, but not till Melbourne Cup Day. There you go. I'll tell you what, Warren Hogan, we'll have you in the studio very shortly having a chat. Many thanks for your time today. Thanks, Ross.